saw military people coming with machine guns. Pa, pa, boom, boom. Ka, 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 ka. Boom. 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 You can already ask Bia why he's sending this army to come attack his own, his own people. L'ennemi est à l'intérieur de la population. Ils rentrent par une porte. Ils sont des citoyens normaux. Ils ressortent par la porte de derrière. Ils ont une arme. Ils sont des sécessionnistes. Et c'est ce qui rend difficile ce combat. Cameroon has long been seen as a peaceful nation in a troubled region. The country has lived in relative harmony even as Cameroon's army fights Boko Haram in the far north region with support from the U.S. military. The Central African country is bilingual. The majority of Cameroonians speak French and around 20% of the population are English speakers. But the English-speaking minority has long complained they are treated as second-class citizens. In late 2016, their struggle for equal rights turned violent. Now, the country is on the brink of civil war. Armed English speakers are fighting to break away from the French-speaking regions and create a new nation. They call it Ambazonia. European colonial powers largely determined Cameroon's borders. In 1916, Britain and France seized the territory from Germany. Britain controlled part of it, and France controlled the rest. In 1960, French-speaking Cameroon won independence, and the following year, the British-controlled regions were given the option to join Cameroon or Nigeria. The southern English-speaking territory opted to join Cameroon, and a bilingual country was born. All the Anglophones, they have a similar problem, the problem of marginalization, the problem of suppression, the problem of assimilation. There was no violence. They were just, I think the people also had had enough with the system, they, you know, so they just needed an outlet. By the upper house, we are going to resort to plan B. Are we right? Are we right? Two years ago, English-speaking civil servants began protesting what they have seen as forced assimilation. Many feel that French speakers have consolidated power, excluding English speakers from government and cutting them off from economic development. The demonstrations snowballed into a larger movement. The government cracked down, jailing moderate leaders and killing some protesters. The movement now had to fall in the hands of people who were more extremists, who were more not only clamoring for the rights, but wanted independence. So that was how things just turned you know, to, 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 to the worst. And as the violence grew, many with more moderate views were radicalized. I don't want Cameroon anymore. I want to fight for a new country. English speakers who support the cause imagine a nation where they control their own government and resources. Now, the national military finds itself fighting civilians turned armed secessionists. In Yaoundé, the capital, posters of President Paul Bia are everywhere. Bia, now in his mid-80s, has been in power since 1982. His administration's version of events is at odds with civilian accounts of what's happening in the English-speaking regions. L'immense majorité de nos compatriotes du nord-ouest et du sud-ouest sont des otages, des séparations. Est-ce que vous savez, madame, ici, si vous avez 1000 personnes, une seule personne avec son Kalashnikov peut imposer son diktat à 1000 personnes qui se trouvent ici non armées. The secessionists, often called the Amba Boys, are mostly young men, fighting in the bush, often with little more than hunting rifles and spears. Since the violence broke out, many English speakers have accused the military of committing human rights abuses against civilians. Instead of targeting separatists, they claim the military is burning down villages and killing innocent people indiscriminately. The government, meanwhile, accuses separatists of attacking security forces and terrorizing civilians. Madame, on ne peut pas combattre dans le nord-ouest et le sud-ouest si nous n'avons pas la population à nos côtés. Quel intérêt aurions-nous à nous mettre à dos la population Sur le plan stratégique, c'est une initiative qui est complètement suicidaire. Vous voulez dire que l'armée camerounaise n'a jamais brûlé un village en zone anglophone, n'a jamais tué des civils. Non, je n'ai pas dit ça. J'ai dit que l'armée camerounaise a brûlé des camps de sécessionnistes. Ne pensez pas, vous, que quand on va rencontrer un camp des Ambazoniens, en pleine forêt, on ne va pas le brûler, on va le brûler. 
Mais l'armée n'a jamais non. trouvé les civiliens et du tout. tué son... okay. Du tout. Ça, c'est les pratiques, c'est les pratiques des terroristes. Aujourd'hui, la population commence à comprendre où est son bien-être. Hundreds of civilians have died and half a million have been displaced, according to human rights groups. I have uh, seven children, all distressed. Even up to now, I don't even know where some of my children are. Man, but if they see any young boy dead, they can shoot him. They say he's, uh, he's, he's Ambazonia. The military people will shoot him. The Washington Post visited Douala, a major port city near the southwest English-speaking region. Displaced people there described when the national military came to their villages. So I saw two, uh, two, uh, I saw two armies 100 meters away from me, on my both sides, and then some were coming from my left, some from the right. So I ran from there to the back house, backyard. Fortunately, there was a hole there. So I stayed in the hole until when I came out, I saw that my house was burnt. I said, if, if they meet me, okay, if they kill me, okay, I'll die. There was serious shooting, serious shooting at that around 6.30. Those Amber boys, their own gun was shot. Pa, 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 pa. Then the military on you don't hear. Pa, 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 pa. Boom! That is a military gun. It was so serious. The shooting was almost for four hours. Nobody going outside. We were just sitting in the square where uh, some people were selling, were drinking. So they came and they just uh, came, they just surprised people. We, we were arrested, so they asked us to lie, lie down. We were beaten. They asked us to lie down. As we were lying, the lady complained she can't lie, she is pregnant. That's where she was shot dead. Members of Cameroon's Rapid Intervention Battalion, also known as BIR, received training and support from around 300 U.S. troops in the country's far north region where the military is fighting a separate battle against Boko Haram militants. U.S. officials insist they are taking measures to ensure training and equipment intended for counterterrorism are not being used in the country's English-speaking regions. Some English speakers said they witnessed BIR carrying out human rights abuses in their villages. Yeah, they came in their truck and they were wearing a, a black vest with BIR written on it, on their chest and on their back. After Douala, the post visited Chang. Civilians there were still living in fear of reprisal from the government. Witnesses shared this cell phone video with the post. It appears to show Cameroonian soldiers setting fire to buildings in an English-speaking village called Aziz last April. In a separate investigation, the BBC matched the location in the video to satellite imagery consistent with fire damage in Azi. I saw in my eyes the military with the Amorka, they stood, they stood a very long distance, they stood in Azi. One, one, one grandmother was running, she could have been around by 90, eh? she was trying to escape. The shoot came and got her on her back, she just fell and, and died on the spot. The way the grandmother died, because they couldn't enter like this. Behind here, there was a very big hole. Their problem, the military in Cameroon, in La Republic, their problem is just that immediately they realize that you are from the English-speaking part of the country. You don't deserve uh, being alive. That is your problem. In response to the specific testimony included in this report, the Cameroonian military said the allegations were false and that they amounted to propaganda. The Post was unable to independently verify civilian testimony of military abuse, but human rights groups have reported similar accounts from the regions. Officials refused repeated requests from the Post to travel to Boya, the capital of the southwest English-speaking region. They insisted the city was mainly secure, but they warned that separatists would target foreigners. Access to the English-speaking areas is increasingly limited, with military checkpoints established between the regions. Disinformation campaigns from the separatists and the government have made it more difficult to differentiate fact from fiction. Eventually, a local journalist filmed these scenes in Boya for the Post. This is what the city looks like on a calm Thursday. 
But, the journalist told the Post, on Mondays, these same streets are empty. Only security forces are outside. For the past two years, the English-speaking regions have observed a ghost town protocol on Mondays. Schools, shops, and businesses all close. Ghost towns originally began as a peaceful protest. Now, the journalist says, civilians don't leave their home out of fear of retaliation from both the separatists and the military. Si euh, les gens adhèrent à votre vision, vous n'avez pas besoin d'utiliser la violence. Il faut qu'ils brûlent les boutiques, il faut qu'ils amputent les gens, il faut qu'ils empêchent par la violence aux enfants d'aller à l'école. Ça atteste donc de ce que c'est par la violence, par la terreur, par l'intimidation qu'ils veulent qu'ils imposent leur doctrine sécessionniste. You cannot ask the government to sit round table with people and to negotiate the split, the amputation of the nation. This can never take place and will never take place. English speakers don't know where their future lies. Many fear the separatists are fighting a losing battle. Many simply want to return home. Others are willing to take up arms to defend the dream of Ambazonia until the very end. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. No one day. <laughs>